All right, what's up, guys? This is Alex from Xtrades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And we also go over indexes and other analysis. So if you tuned in last week, we actually had a pretty slow week in the stock market. There was nothing going on that was super crazy. There wasn't big data sets or anything. Arguably, the market was moving purely off technicals and levels since there wasn't really any data going on. But we did have some pretty good setups last week. AMD had a great Monday. We're looking at calls on that. Eventually, it rejected off the price target we had. Also had shot puts and RCL puts. RCL had a Pretty good dump on Monday as well. I think it went down as much as 3%. And then eventually just chopped the rest of the week. So you kind of had to be quick with that one. And shop pretty much downtrended it all week and hit our price target. So pretty good week for our setups. Relatively slow week for the market. Indexes weren't really pointing to too many great setups or anything like that. But we'll go into the indexes later. This week is arguably the most important day of the month. Or it's at least going to be one of the most important days of the month. And that's because we have the CPI. We do have an inflation reading coming out this week. And this is arguably the most important thing moving the markets, inflation. Whether it's up or down, it's moving off people speculating on inflation, whether it's going up or down. And also that ties into the Federal Reserve and how they are doing interest rate hikes and also planning to eventually pause or cut interest rate hikes. So the market's all about inflation. It's been all about inflation ever since 2022 arguably since 2021, since that's when it started actually going up. But the fight didn't start until 2022 when the Fed started the rate hike cycle. I think it was in March of 2022. So it's just been all about inflation. That's why CPI is always the biggest data set. Probably will stay the biggest data set for a little while, at least until, you know, it calms down a little bit and gets back to the Fed's 2% inflation target. So you can see Monday and Tuesday, Monday, September 11th, rest in peace, Everybody who lost their life in September 11th, 2001, tragic day for America. Hopefully the markets will be a little bit optimistic that day, maybe feeling a little American and we can see some upside in the market. Tuesday, September 12th, nothing scheduled. And then Wednesday is the big day. We do have the consumer price index. We have core CPI, CPI year over year, core CPI year over year. And that's our big data set for the week that all comes out at 8.30 Eastern. And then Thursday, just our usual initial jobless claims. We also have a PPI reading. So this is the producer side of inflation. And this is our inflation gauge for the producer side. So this is the producer price index. We have core PPI, PPI year over year, core PPI year over year. Also have the U.S. retail sales, retail sales minus autos and business inventory. So this will probably be a pretty big day as well. Probably won't move as much as the CPI, but the PPI does have a chance to move us pretty well. So two inflation readings back to back. So this week can definitely be a big mover. And the only thing that sucks about that, it's coming out Wednesday, is that Monday and Tuesday could be a little choppy. I mean, you could see some, you know, pre run ups or some front running up into the data, but we'll have to see. There's really no way to speculate on that until we you know, look at the technicals and see how the indexes are looking. And then Friday, U.S. import prices, Empire State Manufacturing Survey, consumer sentiment. So consumer sentiment is always the most important on Friday. So I'd really just pay attention to that. Empire State Manufacturing Survey could move, but it depends on how extreme the reading is. I've only seen it move the market pretty big, maybe once or twice, you know, in the last year or two. And then consumer sentiment is usually, I mean, it, it can get pretty volatile. And the thing about it is that it's mid-session. So it's 30 minutes after the bell rings. It's not pre-market. So you will see that mid-session volatility 30 minutes after you know, the bell rings. So that's for the data this week. Most important, CPI. Second most important, PPI. Third most important is probably going to be consumer sentiment or maybe retail sales. But yep, that's our data this week. And then for seasonality, we're looking at Monday before September triple witching. NASDAQ down 14 of the last 23. So NASDAQ has been down 14 of the last 23 years. But you can see that we do have a bull icon for this day. We got the Dow at 57.1, S&P at 61.9. NASDAQ at 57.1. And these are probabilities for the chance of the market rising. So looks like the S&P has the highest probability of rising that day. On Tuesday, we do have another bull icon, as you see here. So historically bullish day, just like Monday. But Tuesday, you can see we have another bull icon similar to Monday. This time we have Dow at 71.4, S&P at 71.4, NASDAQ at 61.9. So we have higher probabilities this day on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, another bull icon. So we got three bull icons in a row, which is showing that, you know, there's three historically bullish days in a row. Expiration week 2001, Dow lost 1370 points. So 1,370 points. 
And you can see the probabilities. We got Dow at 66.7, S&P at 71.4, NASDAQ at 61.9. And Thursday, all neutral, nothing crazy. You can see the Dow in the 50s, S&P in the 50s, NASDAQ a little bit higher in the 60s. And then Friday is a triple witching day. So you have multiple securities expiring on this day. Looks like Dow up 11 of last 18, down 7 of last 10. And you got the Dow at 61.9, S&P at 57.1, NASDAQ low at 42.9. So it looks like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all historically bullish. So we'll have to see how that goes. This is honestly the last week, historically, where it kind of runs up. And then after this week, for the 16th, and so on and so forth is when the market starts, you know, getting a little bit more bearish historically. I showed you the season X chart after the 16th is when it's, you know, starts getting pretty, pretty hefty to the downside historically. I don't have the season X chart this week because season X did close down the S&P for free users again, and I don't have a subscription with them. So we'll have to wait until they open that back up. I just don't use seasonality that much. So I think it's pointless for me to get a subscription for it. So we're just looking at the almanac here. And you can go get one of these on Amazon every year. They sell probably for like 30 or 40 bucks. And it just gives you a calendar just like this. Gives you historically bullish days, historically bearish days, whatever you want. Plus like little quotes, little fun facts, and plenty of more charts and data within it. It's not even just a calendar. There's just a bunch of stuff in it. So go check that out. Look up Stock Almanac. There should be a new one coming out this year, probably before Christmas or something. They usually get the new edition towards the end of the year so. And now let's go ahead and get into our individual tickers. We're starting out with LUV. So this is Southwest Airlines. Had a pretty bad week last week. This week we came to close down 6%. You can see it's negative 6.02%. Airlines just had a pretty bad week overall. But now LUV here is pulling into a pretty big drop-based rally demand zone on the one week time frame. So this is a higher time frame setup. So you might want to be a little bit more patient with this one. If you're going to swing trade it, you definitely want to buy 30 to 60 days out. Just be safe because any drawdown, and since you're kind of going counter trend, it's been in a downtrend for a couple of weeks now, you do want to buy time on it in case there is more drawdown risk. And there's really no way to know if there's going to be more drawdown risk. You just have to take that safety precaution, buy some time on it, be a little patient because it may dip into demand just a little bit more before trying to bounce. But we could see a nice little pop on Monday. It just depends on how the futures open up, how the, you know, the U.S. dollar is going. Hopefully the U.S. dollar will start falling back under some serious levels because it broke out last week and it made the markets a little bit shaky. So LUV here, I'm looking at calls, obviously, since we're pulling into this big demand zone. First price target, probably looking at this little 3087. And if we go to the daily chart, it'll make a little bit more sense. You can see this 3087 right here was a previous, just a short term bounce zone. And it actually back tested off this wick right here on this daily bar. You can see it's actually up there and it rejected all the way down here, closed down here. If you know how to read candles, this is your high, this is your close, this is your open, this is your low. So I just wanted to point that out. This big wick was actually off this 3087, which is also this little previous support here. So that'd probably be the short term price target. But this is a one week demand zone. So it could, you know, dip just a little bit lower. You want to be a little bit more patient with one week supply and demand zones just because they're on higher time frames and they're a little bit wider than they would on a just a regular one day base candle for a one day demand zone. This is way wider than it you know, normally would be. So you just got to give a little bit more room sometimes. You can see Friday's close is actually pretty good. I mean, it didn't close weak or anything. And almost looks like, you know, you do have some buyers that showed up down here and pushed it up, you know, into the end of the session. It's not quite a bullish hammer, but it's got, you know, that lower shadow wick, which means there is just a little bit of buy pressure. And it could be given a signal that it could pop up here. So we'll have to see. If you're day trading, you're just going to need to make your risk off point, you know, a little bit tighter. You're probably going to have to do that on an intraday basis rather than using, you know, one day levels as your stop loss or risk off level. So you got two different ways to look at it. Swing trading, you know, you can use the levels a little bit more on the higher time frames. And then, you know, day trading, you just got to adjust as price is moving, even almost as premiums are moving. Because if you're day trading, you're likely doing the shorter term contracts. You might just have to use premium price and also just short term levels intraday rather than using these that we look at. So that's for LUV looking at calls. Hopefully you can get a bounce off this demand zone. Let's look at this slow stochastic real quick. It looks like it's trying to curl up. It's not confirmed yet. So this is actually still negative. If this can curl up, we could probably pop up into this nine EMA. You could see it's actually resistance right here prior. Also resistance over here. So this nine EMA is a pretty good short term price target. If you're not going to use this 3087. But this 3087 is a pretty good one as well. 
but I would definitely, you know, use the one day moving averages. They work really good, as you see right here. Pretty good resistance off the 9 EMA. So just go ahead and add that to your chart. You could use a 21. I'd recommend using the 9, the 21, the 50, and the 200. And you can use those as price targets. If you don't have any clear levels, just regular price levels, use the moving averages as price targets. So that's for LEV, looking at calls. All right, next we're going into another higher time frame setup. You can see I'm actually looking at the one month bars on this one. Each of these bars is one month worth of data. And the reason why I have to do that is because this support goes all the way down to 2008 in November and also 2009 in March. This big 21 28 level we're looking at wba walgreens by the way i didn't mention the name before sorry about that it's a pretty well-known name a lot of people pick up their you know prescriptions from walgreens just been a company forever i feel like they're not going to be going anywhere obviously they do have some competition coming up with amazon if they're going to start selling you know prescription drugs online that does give cvs and walgreens both a little bit of a disadvantage and some competition if people are just going to be ordering their prescription pills online and i feel like that's kind of playing a role along with uh, just crappy ceo and lots of just negative press releases uh, from wall street media so this thing's just been getting slammed so this is a contrarian trade arguably it could just be a long-term buy shares and forget about it type of trade they do have a 8.73 percent dividend pretty good yield uh, maybe a little bit on the higher side and with higher you know dividend yields that does kind of bring in a little bit more risk but this is a pretty good support all the way from 2008 all the way from 2009 so i'm looking for a bounce on this obviously with a monthly bar close like this it could just dip a little bit lower before trying to bounce and you might want to wait for something to form here first before you know trying to buy the knife you can see the one week right here just four straight weeks of selling as well so this one week bar actually closed down you know, 6% as well, just like LUV. LUV's last bar closed down 6%. This is also down 6% from last week. So they're shedding a lot of market cap. They've just been getting slammed. But just watch this 2128 level. I showed you all the way from 2009. We can even name it 2009 support. Send it over to the right here. That way we know what it is and you won't forget. And I'm guessing 20 flat is also going to be a psychological level just because it's an even number and it's an easy easy psychological level to remember so people are definitely probably going to be looking at 20 as a risk off area as well so if you're going to try to trade this maybe just be careful under 20 if it if you buy here and it dips under 20 it might be a good idea to you know start taking off some risk or just be careful make sure you're watching it closely because under 20 you know it could start flushing pretty hard but most importantly watch this 21 28 the 2009 support because we're coming right up to it on the one day you can see we have to go just a little bit lower to tap it and it looks like it may if it, for some reason it doesn't gap up or something on monday it's probably going to try to dip a little bit lower so maybe you could be a little bit more patient with this one if you're buying shares for the long term it doesn't really matter where you buy if you're going to end up dollar cost averaging this and you buy it let's say once a month and you're buying on red days or really buying on green days as well you can buy wherever dollar cost averaging is going to kind of level out your average and make it to where it doesn't really matter where you buy because you're buying once a month and it's if you're buying the same quantity it's going to give you a pretty solid average since you've been adding in all different types of places so i'd recommend doing some research on dollar cost averaging before trying that strategy but it's definitely worth a look so i'll be looking at calls in this as well i would be willing to go 30 to 60 days out i'm not sure about day trades on this one just because I mean, it's pretty oversold and I've never really seen the options on this one. I'm not sure how the options chain looks. I'm not sure if it's liquid. I don't know if there's a lot of volume and open interest. You, you want to see higher volume and open interest if you're going to day trade options. It makes it easier to get out. The spreads aren't as wide and, you know, you won't get shafted by the market maker. So make sure you're checking that if you're going to day trade this. But if you're going to day trade this, definitely wait for some type of reversal signal because this is still in a free fall. But if you're swing trading, really close to support. This general area, just watch for a bounce. So WBA here, looking at long shares, uh, especially for the dividend like I showed you, but also willing to get some calls as well, 30 to 60 days out. And like I said, if you're going to day trade, wait for a better signal. So that's for WBA, looking at calls, looking at long shares. All right, next we're going into Mara. So this is a crypto play. This is going to move with Bitcoin. It's going to move with Ether. And you can see we're pulling into a big drop based rally demand zone, just like I showed you on LUV. It's just your classic drop base rally and this is this is a big rally bar so i'm guessing this demand zone will probably be pretty good considering the imbalance on this one daily bar right here not only that we do have a test one test two and this would be test three for the trend line 
If you moved it over to this right here, it'd be considered a test four as well, but I have it from this wick low to this wick low, and that's putting our trend line all the way over here. So this could just be a test three, but you know, we'll say it's either a test three or test four. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it's testing the trend line. You also have a really nice demand zone. Like I said, this imbalance right here, this one day bar is huge. So I'm guessing something happened down here. Lots of institutions maybe added and there's a great run up here. Went up almost 30%. So this is a huge buy imbalance. So we'll definitely watch this zone. You can see it already kind of reacted to it just a little bit. Ran up into the close a little bit, but still closed down, you know, almost 12%. So it did close very weak and you got to be careful with that, uh, especially with the typical, you know, Friday, down Friday, down Monday, or up Friday, up Monday. You know, that Friday sentiment can continue into Monday. And it's pretty common. It's a very common pattern. And you'll see it a lot on the SPY or QQQ or really any of the indexes. So you want to be careful with that. But either way, really nice demand zone here. Also a really nice trend line. So I'm looking at calls on this. Risk off is super obvious on this one. It's just going to be under demand zone low, probably about 10, 15 or so, or just a one day close under the trend line. So make sure you draw this trend line. Make sure you draw this demand zone. If you're watching, if you're newer, just go ahead and add it. Uh, if you don't know how to draw supply and demand zones, definitely go watch my crash course on it. I posted a free crash course on it. Just go to our YouTube and you'll find it or it's in the Discord. Just search up supply slash demand. You'll probably find it. So that's for Mara looking at calls. Obviously, we want to see a nice little bid in crypto. I don't really care to track crypto or trade it or anything, but this is a really nice demand zone and you got the trend line. So I'm hoping we can see a little bounce on this at least and make a good day trade. Not sure about swinging crypto overnight. It trades 24 seven, makes big gap ups and downs. So you got to be careful with it. If you did, obviously you want to buy time on it. If you're going to hold anything overnight, if you have 30 days, at least on your side, you know, drawdown risk isn't as bad because below 30, 30 days to two weeks is when the theta starts getting bad and your time decay starts rapidly increasing. So you want to be careful. So that 30 plus days is a good threshold to go by. So this for Mara, looking for upside, looking for calls, maybe swings, we'll have to see. All right, next we're going into the indexes. This is my favorite part of the videos that we do because the indexes obviously have a huge influence on how individual stocks move as well. So we wanna be able to read the indexes and other things in order to see how individual stocks are gonna move as well. Everything is tied together. So last week we were focused on this one week supply zone. I'll zoom out to the one week real quick. I mentioned this was a rally based drop zone. I mentioned it was a pretty good one. Obviously this is a pretty heavy sale imbalance on the one week. The only thing I was surprised with was that we actually rejected this right away. I was expecting to go into a little bit more consolidation last week, or at least pull into the moving averages. And we did pull into the moving averages, but we ended up breaking some of them. You can see we broke below the nine and 21. I mentioned we could look at dip buys if it got down to the nine and 21 combo or this back test level. I said the same for QQQ. You want to see, you know, look for upside at the back test level. You didn't want to look at it up here because QQQ is also at supply. So we got that part right. I was just kind of expecting it to stay a little bit more consolidated and it broke down pretty well within three days. I mean, we didn't sell off too heavy, maybe about 1%, but it did react to the supply that we mentioned. So I definitely... You know, I was a little bit more cautious trading long up here just because the supply was so close and we're a little bit overextended over the moving averages. And as I mentioned before, if you get too overextended from the moving averages, eventually it's going to come back up, you know, kind of like a mean regression. It did it down here, got very oversold below the moving averages, came back to them, got overextended over the moving averages, came back down to them. It's just all about reading the market and how, you know, extreme it's moving. And a move like this down here, this is an extreme and a move like this up here, this is an extreme. This is a pretty big gap between price and the nine EMA. So likely, you know, if it gets extended like that, there's a good chance it's gonna fill back down, fill your, you know, your imbalance candles, like this big buy imbalance candle was, you know, pretty destined to get filled eventually. You just gotta figure out when it's gonna do that. So for this week, we actually don't really have anything crazy again this week. We're mid range, like I said last week, or, you know, in between, this resistance and this low. So this is all mid range. It's not really near support. It's not really near resistance, right? So we may have to go off the moving averages. You can see we have the light blue 50 EMA bounced really nicely off of it right here. Also pulled into your nine and 21 combo right here. And you can see it kind of wicked off of that actually. So it reacted to the nine and 21 on Friday. 
on the one day just a tad bit and close under it in order for this to break it would really need to get under the one day 50 ma it's going to be under your light blue dots and in order to you know go higher or kind of go back within the uptrend you're going to need to start closing back over your 9 to 21 combo so that's kind of what we're working with this week and we also need to get back over that 4458 back test level which is this level right here if I removed the moving averages, you can see it a little bit clearer. This is the big back test level. It kind of bounced off it right here, nothing crazy, and then opened below it the next day. And once we popped over it on Friday, there's actually a pretty good upside I could show you. So once we got over the 4458 right here, really big buy imbalance, and then it just kind of, you know, stalled out. And we had a pretty choppy and crappy day on Friday. The rest of the day was just awful. The price action sucked. There's a bunch of wicks. Yeah, wicks, 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 and just total randomness lots of price pinning on friday likely due to options expiration so this 4458 is going to be important focusing on we need to get back over that as well like i said the moving averages is going to kind of be a waiting game we want to see the one day closing either over the 9 and 21 combo to get us back higher or we want to start seeing it close under the one day 50 ema the light blue dots in order to break structure and go lower so you may need to wait for a signal on that before trying anything on the spy or the spx if you want to be sure, if you want, to, if you're more of like a trend trader and you know you want to be able to guess less and just kind of go with the flow, you're going to wait for that one day close over that or the one day close under the 50 EMA. You can see we're trading in between them, so that's why you want to wait. And not only that, like I said, we closed just briefly under the 4458. We want to get back over that. So you got mixed signals here. You, get, you know you're still holding your 50 but you're under your 9 and 21. That's why you want to wait for them, you know, to get over one of them. You got slow stochastic here, negative, so that's not really good. We want to see that cross back up if you want to see the market go higher. Obviously, oscillators aren't law and they're nothing to just abide by, but it's an extra piece of, you know, momentum that you can read. And you can see once we got a crossover over here, momentum was great. And once we got the negative crossover right here on Tuesday is when we had that two-day little sell-off, so... The crossovers work pretty good. Obviously, you can get false signals, like you get a couple right here, but once you get a really nice one, it can definitely help you read the market just a little bit better. But you want to pair it with everything else, like your levels, your moving averages, supply and demand zones, everything. Don't just use it by itself. So that's for SPX. Just want to see a one-day close over the 921 combo, your green and yellow, or you want to see a one-day close under this for a signal. Just kind of in between, need to wait for that signal. All right, next we're going into QQQ. So last week we were focused on the supply zone. So last Friday, it already got an, an initial rejection off of the supply zone. So we knew for a fact that it somewhat you know, responded to this. It also filled this little gap that it had right here. You can see uh, the gap ended right here and it started up here. So it basically filled at least halfway. Maybe not the craziest gap or anything, but it did fill up and run into that supply. And once the gap kind of closes, and it's been filled a little bit and it runs into supplies a good chance it's gonna go lower so i think i mentioned qqq looked a little bit better for downside because it actually tapped the zone and i mentioned if it pulled back into the 372.85 this little area right here is where you could try to look to buy the dip and if we go down to 15 minute here and let's look at once it pulled into the 372.85 look at this really nice bounce off that on the 15 minute so this made a really nice day trade and all you had to do is just mark that back test level and pay attention to it. And that's why we cover them in these videos, because we, we just try to cover the most important inflection points. We want to look for the levels that are more extreme or prices reacted to the most extreme. 372.85 was an extreme, you know, previously as a big sale and balance candle. And you can see once we pulled in it right here, nice little dead cap bounce off of it. And then you can see once we got under it, pretty heavy gap down. And then once we got back over it right here, big buy imbalance candle ran up into you know, this little Wednesday resistance and kind of chopped around. So you can see the extremes. You got a pretty big bounce, pretty big pop over it. Another big bounce off it right here. So that's why you want to mark these one day levels and you want to pay attention to the most extremes. And this candle right here was extreme and this was the high of the candle. That's why this 372.85 is so important so this week's a little bit different we're not above the 372.85 we're actually closed just a little bit under it we would need to see a pop back over it in order for me to feel like it can run back up we we'll have the moving averages here see how those are looking we're actually over the 21 here just briefly under the nine so the nine and 21 combo is holding it went under right here briefly and ended up closing right here 
and then it popped the next day. So the 921 combo is working pretty good, holding up as it should for an uptrend. But we do need to see it over that 372.85 first. If it starts getting back over that on the shorter term time frames, you can look for upside. And then if we get a one day close back over that, even better. Because if there's a one day close, that's going to be over the 9, which is your green. It's going to be over your 21. And it's going to be over the 372.85. So that'll give you a good probabilities to go back up towards supply. But if we start staying under this 372.85 and start closing under the, you know, one day 21 EMA, obviously that can take you down to your 50 and also this little demand zone right here. Get rid of these real quick. This is a little rally based rally demand zone and that's going to be from August 29th. So just a little bit ago, this is a huge buy imbalance candle though, just from filling up this sale imbalance candle, but big, big buy imbalance. NASDAQ was up 2.18% that day. So you definitely want to pay attention to this. If price can get down here, definitely start looking to scoop up, you know, look for calls or look for bounces at this area. That's going to be right at, mm, let's call it 367. You can just call it 367 flat. And you could even mark that if you want. If you don't want to draw the demand zone, just draw a line at 367 flat, set an alert, wait for it to get down there, and look for a bounce because it's definitely possible. If we got down there, of course, I would definitely way rather buy down here at demand than you know try to guess in between this area. But like I said, if you can get over that 372.85, get over that and have a one day close over that level, I would feel really good about some more upside, at least you know, for this week, because after this week is when the seasonality starts getting a little bit weaker. And it's usually October, towards the beginning of October, when, you know, the market historically will start rallying. You can find some good discounts. You'll see that broad, pretty much that broad market rally on a lot of things. So for QQQ here, it's going to be the waiting game, just like the S&P. You want to see that move over 372.85. You want to see a close over it. Totally in the 9 and 21 combo good. If it starts closing under the 21, which is the yellow, not a good sign and probably start heading back down to demand or the light blues right here, which is the 50 EMA. So I just wait for that signal over 372.85 and you could look for some upside. Slow stochastics negative still. So that could be another good signal to wait for. If you want to wait for that to cross positive, that's always a good sign. And it can kind of help you hold your trades a little bit because you know that the momentum is positive, at least on the short term. All right. Next, we're going into IWM. So last week was much, much more clean cut. And the reason for that is because we had that 189.24 level marked. Let me get rid of these moving averages. So we had this 189.24 level marked. And then we also had the supply that we were focused on. The one thing we wanted to see was either IWM get over 192 or get back under 189.24. I mentioned if we can get under 189.24 that you'd have a pretty good chance to start shorting. And there could be a flush and it would try to make that shoulder that we've been looking for the past couple of weeks. I was looking for it to get made at the 189s, but it got just a little bit over that. But either way, I still made that second shoulder finally. Now, if the head and shoulders does want to play out, it's obviously going to have to break the neckline. And the neckline is kind of hard to figure out what it is here. It might be under like 180 or so, just because it kind of like trends a little bit right here. If you really wanted to find the neckline, I'd probably just go with 180 flat. That's the most clear cut way to do it. You do have these demand zones as well. If you wanted to wait for it to get under 178, even that could confirm the head and shoulders and that, that could go lower. But the head and shoulders is not confirmed until it breaks the neckline. It's just a heads up. So the fact that this shoulder was made, you got the head and this shoulder was made, it's only speculation that you know this could go lower because your head and shoulders pattern, like I said, is not confirmed until it breaks the neckline. And the neckline is going to be like 180, you know, maybe 170. I would probably bet on 180. If I can get under 180, that's definitely a good chance it's going to just flush the demands and it's going to go lower. Likely to, you know, this 170 area, 169s. And that's going to be the 2023 lows for March. So I hope that makes sense. We had the 189.24 just from over here. We wanted to see it get under that before trying to go short. Obviously, we could have just speculated inside the supply and expected it to reject, but you don't really know. There's no way to really know until it actually breaks the level. And once it got under the 189.24, this daily candle was huge. This was down 2% that day. And then it was just straight selling the rest of the week. So the supply worked out really good. And the 189.24 flush worked out really good. But for this week, we now made it back down to the demand where previously we were looking for bounces and we got it. Now we're back to that same zone. So naturally, since we're at demand here, I'm going to have to assume that it might try to hold up here, whether it's short term, whether it's medium term. I have to assume that this little area right here can bounce, whether it's going to be right here at the 184s or whether it's going to be you know more towards the demand zone low. 
at the 180s or the 181s. This is a demand zone. It's a pretty strong one. It's proved that from this little bounce right here. This is a nice little rally. We're back to that same spot. So IWM this week, I'm probably just going to look for a bounce. I'm not sure if it'll run back up to the 189 though, just because it already made this shoulder. So I feel like people are going to be a little bit more skeptical now that the second shoulder is made. That could bring some pressure and it may be a little bit harder to bounce, but I do feel like, you know, this area, it's going to make an attempt at least because this demand zone is pretty good. Obviously it already had, you know, one decent bounce, but you know, the second bounce can be just as good as well. It just depends on sentiment. You definitely don't want to go short right here. If you want to just a summary of what we're talking about for this week, I definitely wouldn't look at a short right here just because you have really nice demand. It's a drop base rally demand zone. And like I said, bounced pretty nice prior already rejected super hard already broke the 189 24. Uh, the 189 should have been your entry if you wanted to go short. Now you're going to want to wait for the neckline to break, or you can start looking at, you know, some short term bounces here for day trades at least. So that's for IWM. Be careful as at this demand zone if you're short i'm personally gonna be looking for a potential bounce of this area even if it's just short term all right next we're going into the vix which made it into our video title last week i believe it was title vix and dxy at major technical levels or something like that I forgot what i named it and that ended up being the case so vix pulled into the 13 flat and the 1273 area i mentioned you know you don't want to look for the exact levels all the time i've mentioned that in multiple videos so I, I think I mentioned last week, you just want to pay attention to the 13 flat area and it actually gapped up Monday before it even gave you a chance to blink. So it gapped up 7% and closed at about 14, 14 flat. But the thing is, even though it ran up here, you can see that the VIX had lots of wicks, lots of rejections and no really major close back over a level. So you got to close here on Monday at 14, you got to close here at 1440s. And then you have a close here at 1440s again. So we never got an actual close over the 1460 mark, which is these lows right here. And we never got a close over 1553 either, which is the level we've been focused on for weeks. This is probably the most major level to get over. Once it gets back over that, volatility has proved to increase pretty substantially on a short term basis. It'll ramp up very fast and also it'll ramp down very fast as well once it gets below that. And you can see once we tap the 1553, really big rejection candle. And then it started heading back to the lows. So we closed on Friday, this Friday, just a little bit higher than last Friday. Closed at lower 13s. Last Friday closed at 1380s this week or this Friday. So since it rejected that 1553 and it's back under this 2021 low, I kind of have to assume that it might just go back to the 13 flat or the 1273 area. We'll just look at 13 flat to 1273 as a zone to look for. I just wouldn't be biased. I wouldn't wait for the exact 1273 to hit. Look for the 13s as well, like the lower 13. And then, you know, stretch it down a little bit to 1273 as well. Just that, you know, that zone in general should be looked at. And it proved that because it closed there on Friday and literally gapped up you know, the next trading session on Monday, 7%. So I'd expect volatility to just head back to the 13s or so, just because you got a big rejection at the 15s and just kind of play it by ear once it gets down to the 13s again. I would definitely look for it to either hold up, maybe repeat what it did prior or start looking for that break under the 1273. But your 1273 is your maximum low. So it would absolutely have to break under that for volatility to go, you know, much lower. Once it gets under that, or if it does ever get under that, market can definitely scream a lot higher this 1273 is huge it's your double bottom support even if it can get under 13s that would be great as well so it's pretty cool to see that it you know ended up reacting to 13 flat and the, you know this general low now i feel like it's just going to head back down to it again i mean there's really no signals here indicating that volatility is going to go higher you got a rejection off the 1553 we've been looking at for weeks you got you know close back under this 2021 low so it looks like it's just going to fill back down again do the same thing just head back to 13 flat so i just look for that level and then make sure you're paying attention make sure if you see it's bouncing aggressively off of that 13 flat or the 1273s it's likely volatility is going to try to bounce higher and you know the market will pull back on the short term but just kind of got to play by ear respond you know to real time price action and react accordingly all right, and last but not least, we're going into the DXY. So this is the US dollar. I think we closed right here last Friday. This is Friday, September 1st. And we were actually under the 10440s and also under the 10470s. So this is your 10470 level. This is your 10440s rejection level. 
And we ended up actually breaking over both of those. If I show you this crazy back test here from Friday, this is the one of 470s. This is why you want to mark these levels. If you're day trading and using the DXY and the VIX as day trading signals and you want to see how the market's reacting on the short term, you want to be marking these one day levels. Look at how this reacted to 10470s. Huge, huge back test of bounce. And this actually brought the market a little bit lower on Friday. So if you would have saw that this was holding, you'd be a little bit more skeptical to go long. And I was very skeptical Friday. I actually, I think I might have done like one or two scalps that day on futures, but I didn't do any options that day. Just the, the dollar and the yields, they just were kind of sketching me out. So I just kind of played it cool on Friday. The, the price action really wasn't my favorite either, but definitely mark these one day levels that we go over in every single video because they're pretty important, especially if you're day trading because they do react to that on the short term. And you can see the big wick from Friday right there. Uh, this one right here, that was that same thing we just looked at, that big bounce off the back test. And that was that 10470 that we have marked right here. So what we need, if you wanna see the market go higher, you wanna see more bullish confidence, you wanna see the dollar keep selling off like this, it's down quarter percent, really good. So this is down 0.25, which is great. Uh, that could send the futures higher and also send the market higher tomorrow if we stay under it. But we do need to see it getting under both of these. So you wanna see it under the 10470s and we wanna see it under the 10440s. The reason why you wanna see it under the 10440s as well is because this is a pretty big imbalance area or rejection area, whatever you wanna call it. And that's from this wick high right here. You wanna see it under that 10440s and under the 10470s that I just showed you. If it can't do that, obviously this is a short term support. So this could hold just like this and it can march higher. So that's why we needed to get under that. So kind of assume that this is going to hold until you see it closing under those. If you can start seeing closing under those, you could definitely expect it to fill that, you know, buy imbalance back down and probably head back down to the 103s. Otherwise, I showed you what, you know, what it did to 10470 on Friday. It could do that same exact thing. So we needed to close under that. Look at 10470s as support right now and kind of assume that this can hold until you, you know, until it proves you otherwise. I feel like we can get a nice little bounce in the market. I'm hoping so. Obviously, if it's telling me otherwise, I'll you know be willing to go short or you know look at puts or you know not look at these calls or longs or anything. But I'm hoping we can get under that 10470s, see more aggressive selling, and then we can feel good about the market. And then VIX also kind of flashing. The volatility will go a little bit lower, at least to the 13 flat mark. Hopefully to 1273 overall, which is that low, similar to last week. Definitely at some major technical levels right now. VIX not so much. DXY is at a more technical level. This is a big back test area. So we want to see either bouncing from here and holding up. That would be bearish for the market. If it starts holding up and bouncing from here, it's going to take the market lower more than likely. If we can start getting some major closes, one day candle closes under this, that would be great. That would definitely send the market higher, I believe. The reason why you want to see one day closes is because these one hour bars or even if you used a four hour bar, the hourlies, they can kind of fake out, right? You got a one hour close under it right here, ended up holding and bouncing. You got a one hour close under it right here, ended up holding and bouncing. So you want to see the one day closes. The one day closes kind of give the best signal. Like you got a one day breakout right here that sent it up for a couple of days. If we can get a you know one day breakdown and get a close, they could send it lower and do the opposite. And then you can see the 103s down here, every close is holding it. It's holding over it. So that's how you kind of determine if there's strength at a level, if it's closing above it or below it, that's going to kind of prove your strength of the level. So that's why you want to see the one day closes over or under, and that will determine your strength or weakness. So that's the video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our x -Trays YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys, and I'm out.